Hello, so welcome to another reading vlog. This week my main focus is going to be reading the second two books, I want to say the last two books, in the His Dark Material series by Philip Pullman. So a f month or so ago I read the first book, what is it called? The Golden Compass or Northern Lights, depending on which hemisphere, which part of the world you're in. So this follows this girl named Lyra, uh, she's an orphan, she lives at this university, and then she overhears some things that are going on, some intrigues that are going on with magical investigations and her uncle, and then as well uh, she's always kind of running off and playing with the other children around the university, and those children start going missing, and by getting involved in both of these things she kind of ends up going on a bit of a journey, uh, meeting a bunch of older mentors, uh, also a talking polar bear, and eventually at the end of that she learns something about the magic, which I expect is going to play a big part in these next two books, I don't really know. So I've got the audiobook for The Subtle Knife, which is the second book, and The Amber Spyglass, which is the third book. There is like a newer, new trilogy that kind of could be a continuation, could be a spin-off. At this point I don't think I'm going to continue it because I didn't love love the first book, but I do want to at least read the next two because this is a series that a lot of people loved when they were younger, and I just like knowing about books that lots of people like and are kind of like important pieces of the fantasy conversation. So I will also admit like a lot of the critiques around this are about its messaging around Christianity. I'm not religious and I don't find myself on either side of whatever argument the first book was trying to make, but I guess we will see what argument the next two books seem to be trying to make. I'm really hoping that it's going to do some cool stuff with the magic and that Lyra is going to be a little bit less annoying than I found her in the first book, but I guess we'll see. Um, as well, since that's just audiobooks, I am going to be reading uh, these Ruth Rendell collected stories, a bunch of short stories by Ruth Rendell, probably nothing like his Dark Materials, uh, and I don't know, I've put this on my TBR before and not really gotten through it. I have read the first one before though and I did like it, so I guess I'll let you know how I go with this. I don't expect to finish this by the time I finish the audiobooks of the other ones, so I guess we'll see what happens, but I will be reading this as well and I'll update you a little bit as we go. I don't, it's short story, so I don't really know what I'll have to say anyway. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what else is happening this week. Oh, I do know. At the end of the week, Daylight Savings, which I'm super hyped for. The summer has started to come back because I have sock marks on my feet, so like, summer is coming. And other than that, we're kind of just waiting for the perfect house to show up, so that as soon as that happens we're gonna have to go house shopping. But until then we're kind of just in this weird limbo of waiting. But it's a relaxing kind of waiting, so it's not so bad and should give us plenty of time for reading, although I do also need to finish sorting up my house so that once we buy the new one we can sell this one. It's a whole big process that kind of seems never-ending, but I guess we'll keep working through it. Blech. My memory card just decided it was full, even though it really shouldn't be full because I'm sure I emptied it the other day, but apparently it is full. Anyway, what was I saying? I can't really remember, but anyway, Will and Lyra are out trying to learn things and we're learning along with them. As well, there are kind of scenes interspersed with Will and Lyra, which is following the adults back in Lyra's world. Uh, so there's a witch and an aeronaut and I feel like there was another character, but I've forgotten. And I guess they're trying to find Lyra and of course going on about how important she is. I'm not minding that. This is where a lot of the weird religious stuff is happening at the moment in the story, and I'm wondering if a lot of the like big drama or the controversy over this book was around the idea that in that world the church is being set up as the enemy. Now, I'm not really bothered by that, and I think these days that's not really even a very controversial kind of trope, so but maybe it was at the time or maybe it's more likely to be a drama in places like America where there are a lot of religious people. I don't know, but it's fine. I don't think it's anything revolutionary. And it is actually quite interestingly contrasted with in the other world they're dealing with these scientists who look at things in a very scientific way. And there was one where the scientist says, oh well, science doesn't need to worry about good or evil. And I think it was Lyra or was it Will? But either way, uh, they were like, no, I think you 
do still need to worry about good and evil. So I guess the summary is that I am enjoying the second book more but also I'm halfway through and not much has happened so I guess we'll see where we end up with that. Then as well I've actually surprised myself with how far I've gotten through this one. I'm about 100 pages through and I think I've read about eight stories. The only thing though is I am enjoying them. I'm finding them quite easy to get through, easy to read and most of them have like cool little twists at the end. There's usually a murder and like through the build up uh, you're kind of expecting one thing but then something else happens and I'm liking it. I'm Like I'm finding all the stories kind of fun, kind of smart but at the same time like am I gonna remember any of these stories? I don't know if I am and I think this is just like when I read books that don't have any fantasy or science fiction kind of ideas in there I, I just kind of get bored. So yeah I don't know. I mean I am having fun with this in the moment when I'm reading it but I just I wouldn't be surprised if by the time it comes to my wrap up at the end of the month that I can't even remember any of these stories. Maybe that's a challenge for myself. Uh, anyway tomorrow I am going to be walking down to the hospital for my infusion which means lots of audiobook listening time so I should finish the subtle knife off and I should also get through quite a lot more of these although I haven't been reading these like sitting down and reading multiple stories at once so I'm not sure how well that will work but I guess we'll see. Baby, I Okay so let's try a different camera angle than I normally do. I definitely think you can see way too much of the junk I have on the top of my printer but maybe that will motivate me to sort it out. I do need to do that but maybe the whole lighting situation will be better. I've just realized I've still got my earbuds in. Anyway let me update you. So I did not quite finish the subtle knife on my walk to the hospital but I'm only about an hour of actual listening time from the end. I think more of real audiobook time. Let me check the percentage. 83% so like I'm getting pretty close to the end. I do feel like from halfway we got this new thing introduced so the name of the book The Subtle Knife we finally found out what that is and it's really interesting. I really like the possibilities that it opens up. Uh, as well we are learning more I guess about the way that it's using Christian mythology and I do think the way that it's doing that is really interesting. I think I can see now though why uh, some Christians might not appreciate the way that it's using it but again like I think in, a, in more modern times a lot more of that kind of thing has been done. But anyway I am actually I think kind of liking it. I, to be honest I still don't like the writing style although it is hard to know whether the audiobook narration style is making that worse for me but I, I think overall I still definitely don't like the writing style but I do like some of the ideas that it's exploring uh, as well as the religious aspect that is also kind of like a scientific aspect and the way that it links those together is really interesting and in fact I guess some of the ideas that it's starting to explore a little bit are some things that I really like. So I'm feeling quite optimistic about the book at the moment which is a surprise after disliking the first one so much. I hope that the ending won't ruin it and that the, the third book won't ruin it. Uh, then as well while I was at the hospital I think I only read a couple of these stories. Was it two or was it one? Why is my bookmark in completely the wrong place? Oh oh I remember now. Uh, last night I read one where this woman uh, who was refusing sex to her husband was described as frigid and um, awful ace representation but I realized this book was written like late 70s early 80s so are we surprised? Not really. Then there was another one where uh, I guess it's like split personality disorder. Uh, is that what that's even called these days? Anyway also terrible representation but kind of an interesting story uh, and actually that bit was a little bit uh, terrible trans representation as well and then uh, the one that I read last was quite a long one and it was kind of about mushroom poisoning which given there's a case kind of going on in Australia at the moment about some woman possibly having poisoned family members at a dinner or was it just a mistake? We don't know and so I thought this might be kind of similar-ish enough to be interesting in regards to that but actually this was the most boring story that I've read so far from this book so 
yeah, those three were a little bit of a mixed bag, but I did still find the stories quite readable, and so I'm looking forward to continuing. I'm now, I'm actually almost halfway, so very impressed with myself for getting through them as fast as that. So I am playing around with my camera. I do not know that it's going to work out uh, as well. You can see I still haven't cleaned up this mess, but I'm about to film a video, so maybe uh, that will motivate me to do it. That's actually why this is messier than it was before. I'm going backwards. Anyway, I wanted to update you. So you, yesterday, I've lost track of time, uh, but on my run, I did finish off the subtle knife and i really liked some of the things that were set up in the end i will say the very ending was a cliffhanger and i was very happy to already have the next book ready to go so that i could know what happens even though the next book so i started it i haven't read very much it's quite slow going and a lot of what we're getting isn't really following lyra or will and it's their part of the story that i really want to know about there has been some of will and some of Lyra. The Lyra stuff is very strange, and the Will stuff, I'm kind of liking it. So Will has kind of met up with these angels, and the angels and the way that Will is interacting with them have been making me laugh quite a lot. I can definitely see now, like, these books are setting up the church as, like, deceivers who have been lying in order to control people, and it's getting quite a lot into Christian mythology, so I can see why Christian people might have had issue with this story, but also I really like that Christian mythology and stories that get into that and some of the other weird like world hopping stuff that's going on. I still definitely don't like the writing style, but um, at least now the concept's interesting and I can definitely see like reading this as a child now why you might find it really interesting, whereas when I read the first book I thought why would a kid even like this? And I definitely think this it's still a little bit true. <laughs> especially now in the third book when we're getting less of Will and Lyra, but at the same time I, th I think I get it. I think I get it. And I am interested to see where this third book is going to go. Um, as well, I have been reading this, but I think I've only read one other story since I talked to you, and it was one that I realized I accidentally skipped over because I've been moving between the physical book and the ebook on my phone. So uh, the one I read was actually really weird. It was about this guy who hates humans but really loves animals and has kind of taken a job as an assassin because he doesn't really care about human life. He basically thinks humans are shit, um, which was quite an interesting perspective to read from, but maybe also kind of like a dark mirror on my most misanthropic views. Anyway, I feel like the sun is getting brighter and this camera setup is maybe not working. I am going to check that and then I'm going to film a video and then actually it's going to be a horrible rainy day so maybe I'll fit in a bunch more reading. Maybe. Hello, so am I going to acknowledge the massive mess behind me? Maybe at the end. Uh, so firstly, this one. 
I am now past halfway, so I have been making progress, but slower progress than I was. I think because I've gotten up to a couple of stories, I think maybe there's even going to be another one. I hope there's not too many. Following this, like, detective as he investigates different crimes, and they're still really clever, but unlike the first stories I was reading where you're more following the characters as things unfold to the characters that you're following, this is just the detective figuring it out and I don't find that as compelling and they're longer short stories than the the earlier ones and I found the, the shorter short stories easier to get through so it has slowed down my pace a little bit these ones. Hopefully there won't be too many of those ones because I'm just not enjoying them as much. Then as well I am about oh just past 50% of the Amber Spyglass I'm still liking it. I will say I feel like the beginning we weren't really getting a lot of Will or Lyra. Like especially Lyra was kind of out of the picture a bit. There were some weird scenes with her kind of dreaming and the way that the audiobook, because this is like full cast, very dramatic audiobook, um, it was very over the top and a little bit like just weird to me. Uh, so I didn't really love those bits and I just felt like the lack of Lyra, even though I didn't really like her in the first book, I feel like the fact that now the story's all over the place makes it feel a bit less focused. And like the adult characters that we're mostly getting bits of now haven't really been properly developed as people. And I think if you're reading this as a kid that probably wouldn't be a problem because when you're a kid you don't really think of adults as proper people anyway, but I do think the story would have been more engaging if it was just sticking with Will and Lyra, but I do think now we're back with Will and Lyra and for the end of the book we're going to be following them, so we'll see if that actually happens. I definitely think even though there are some interesting things being done with the Christian mythology, I'm less interested in it compared to what was happening in The Subtle Knife, but my plan is, so behind me, I have all this crap, most of this is stuff that we need to get rid of, but we're going to keep some just for like drop cloths or packing materials so I need to shuffle my wardrobe again to put some of that stuff in there because we're shuffling around the whole house to make things work for different things uh, and then some of this also just needs to be bagged up so we can take it to the clothing bin so what I'm going to do this afternoon is listen to my audiobook while I sort out this stuff and then I'll go for a run tomorrow morning as well so by the end of that I should have finished it hopefully Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you Play your favorite movie Laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two The corner coffee shop we like to go Late night walks with you to take me home Hello! So I did in fact manage to finish The Amber Spyglass and I think the series peaked at The Subtle Knife. Uh, for me, The Amber Spyglass was just way too scattered. It was really weird in that it kind of climaxed at about 75% of the way through, maybe 80% of the way through, with this big like dramatic battle between a couple of the adults and the authority or the church of Lyra's world. But then after that, it got really like slow, I guess kind of reflective or much more like theological and maybe I think if you were really connected to Lyra and Will that part would have an impact on you but I was kind of bored. Uh, also I just found like the whole book is kind of based on this idea that Christianity is based on a mistake that they misunderstood things and because of that everything is wrong and people should be doing something different and so it's kind of weird because most of the book or most of the series feels very anti-religion but then right at the end even though it's still kind of anti-religion it was almost like anti-christian but pro-religion or like at least it had a lot of religious ideas in there and I didn't really like it. I think I just found the ending very dissatisfying. I think as well if you were really connected to Lyra and Will, especially like their friendship, I think that ending would also be quite disappointing from that perspective. So. I don't know, there were some really cool ideas introduced in the world uh, and even the third book introduced like these new species, new races of people or like different creatures. It was just so much introduced that then wasn't explored enough because there wasn't time. I will say there were times it definitely reminded me of the later books in the Wrinkle in Time series because while that's quite like pro-Christian, really gets into Christian mythology in a pro-Christian way, it's also very weird and the writing style is terrible. 
<laughs> I guess I'm saying it's similar in that it's based around Christian themes, pro or against, and I didn't like the writing style, but I guess both of these are kind of classics. I can definitely see why as a kid you might like this series and it might have a big impact on you, but as an adult it just didn't really do it for me. I did read a review though where someone said that they thought even adults could get a lot out of this, but maybe that's just if you haven't thought about religion much. Anyway, I guess the summary is I didn't mind The Subtle Knife. I thought it had a lot of really great ideas, but I think the ending wasn't that great, and I don't think I'll be continuing the new spin-off trilogy or whatever that is. Uh, the other thing is that I did make some more progress on this. I have not finished it, however I'm pretty sure that I've gotten to the end of this de Detective... Detective Wexford? Is that his name? Yes, Wexford. So Detective Wexford I found out is actually a character from her other books, like she wrote like 20 books around this detective, and so I can see why maybe if you've read those books you would like these short stories, but the last one I read just starts out even with like his partner getting married and there was a lot of time spent on that wedding and like all these other side characters that I guess are in the main books but like just reading the short stories I just didn't think they were as good as like the first section which had all those like much more original and complete short stories whereas in the Wexford ones I always felt like I was missing stuff and I guess that's because there's so much more character work done in the main novels but now I think it's kind of divided into three parts so I'm up to part three which hopefully will be more like the beginning but I guess we'll see um I will be continuing this next week so I guess that's my week of reading. Uh, do let me know if you've read His Dark Materials or if you've read Ruth Rendell, uh, what you think about them, or let me know if you've been reading anything exciting lately. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well, and I will see you next time. Bye.